What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Evolve with Emily show. I am your host, Emily Hayden. And for today's episode, we are interviewing one of the OGs of the IFBB bikini world, India Paulino. And I'm really excited to get into today's episode. We talked a lot about a bunch of different things, actually, from conscious reparenting and personal development to competing and her goals to women's personal safety and responsibility and the opportunity to be self-aware and to be able to protect yourself and some personal stories that we get into which are uh, gave me chills and her chills too. just even think about you know some of the things that even just we have personally experienced when it comes to that and our conversation is I think really important it just I feel it we touched on a lot of things that uh, we both feel very strongly about but about you know conversations that I think really need to happen so I'm excited for you guys to listen to that today but before we get into that I wanted to share with you the cure nutrition product of today so today's product is rise and rise is something that I have been using when I want to replace my second cup of coffee or if I don't want to be drinking an energy drink I will use rise rise is a nootropic formulated by cured's very own in-house clinical herbalist it contains a blend of lion's mane and cordyceps mushrooms as well as a bunch of other things and broad spectrum CBD so I take it because it really makes me clear and focused and I don't like blasting my adrenals with caffeine and tons of coffee and tons of energy drinks when I do that my whole system just feels really tired like mentally physically I just feel really drained whereas when I go for a nootropic like rise instead I actually just I feel really good my energy is really good and I don't feel that same weariness or exhaustion that I do when I know that I'm blasting my adrenals with way too much caffeine so I really do love this product I know that you guys will really love it if you try it So I really suggest that you guys get on there and try it, start to replace that extra cup of coffee, replace that energy drink or even that pre-workout with something like Rise. And I think once you experience it for yourself, you'll understand just the difference between, you know, uh, too much caffeine intake and something like a nootropic. Right now, Cured is extending an an exclusive offer to you guys, my listeners. You can grab Rise for 20% off by visiting curednutrition.com backslash Emily Hayden and using coupon code Emily Hayden at checkout. That's C-U-R-E-D nutrition.com backslash Emily Hayden and coupon code Emily Hayden at checkout to save 20%. So let me know if you guys have tried it out. If it is still in the month of June, make sure to email your receipt to evolvewithemily at gmail.com so that I can choose a few winners for a giveaway that I'm doing for those of you that are choosing to support the show. This is the best way to support the show currently. All right, without further ado, let's get to today's guest. Today's guest is India Paulino. She is former law enforcement officer an IFBB bikini pro, an Olympian, a three-time Arnold Classic champion, a 15-time pro champion, a wife, a mama, a personal development and conscious parenting coach. And she took about a four-year break from competing and recently just got back on stage where she is absolutely crushing it again. But I just have to say, guys, I am really personally excited for this episode because if you guys don't know, if you aren't, you know, super involved into the competing world, India was one of the OG, OG bikini competitors. And she was one of the top competitors for years, like always just was so amazing, had such incredible stage presence. I feel like she was really known for that. Um, And she took some time away from the stage. So her return is such a big deal to this industry and it's really inspiring because, you know, she's a wife and a mom and she has all these other things going on and yet she was able to make it not just back to the stage, but back to the stage and really crushing it as a pro. And, you know, with all the changes that the industry has had, I think that speaks a lot to her work ethic, her dedication and her just passion for the sport in general. So with that, India, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And thank you for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> yeah. Did I, was all of that correct? I, you won a lot of shows. I was like, was that correct? <laughs> oh, it was. So excited to chat with you today and just and beyond. So yay. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Okay. So, well, let's start back to what got you competing in the first place. And when did you realize that you were so passionate about it? I mean, you competed so many times. So how, what got you into it and what made you love it so much? So, you know, it's interesting. So when I first started, I was a police officer and I was working the midnight shift, my absolutely favorite shift. 
And I was looking through the magazines and I saw it was actually Nathalia Mello. Yes, on, oh, I love her. <laughs> she was competing on the Arnold stage. Now, I knew nothing about bodybuilding. Like, I didn't even, I just, I didn't know that even existed. Like, it wasn't a thing. Yes, I trained my butt off. I grew up, you know, doing all kinds of physical things. Uh, but, you know, in police work, it was more f- for survival. You know, I wanted to be in shape. I wanted to be able to, I needed to be strong. I needed to be fit. Mm-hmm. But it was never to look a certain way. Um, and so when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? What is she doing on that stage? Like everything was just beautiful. Like her suit, her hair, makeup, you know, her physique was insane. And so I saw that and immediately I was curious and I was like, I don't know what this is, but I want to do it. Uh (laughs) My first, um, intro to it. And then, um, I, actually got in contact with her she lived in Fort Lauderdale which was so crazy what a small world Mm -hmm. worked in the same place that another friend worked at so we got in contact and I got in contact with her coach at the time Mm -hmm. met up with her there was actually a show in Fort Lauderdale and saw the coach she's like bring your suit I'm like okay like everything was so weird to me I was like what is I don't know what I'm doing yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) and she's like okay you can compete compete in the show next week I'm like what am I supposed to train or I mean I was training but I felt there was a specific way to do things Mm -hmm. I don't know Mm -hmm. and yeah she gave me a training program and um I was again already in shape just not Mm -hmm. training for because I had no idea what that was and yeah I her show and I was hooked Mm -hmm. like I know the feeling. I feel like that's a pretty common story among competitors who, you know, really have longevity in it. It's like that first show was just kind of the little bait and we're like, oh man, (laughs) here we go. (laughs) So, okay. Your first, your first, you know, year of competing and your first, you know, kind of year in the industry, what do you feel like that taught you? And what are some of the lessons that you learned kind of going into a whole new world of the fitness industry and of competing? So I would have to say, uh, I mean, you know, competing is one of those things that you can't avoid growing if you want to. Mm -hmm. It is one of the, we see it as just like a physical, you know, the physical part of it, because yes, we work our butts off and then we go on stage and we are judged based on a physical body. Mm -hmm. But the journey, my goodness, that journey, like what we have to go through every single day and what it takes to get there, to get that physique there, despite what you have going on in life, because nobody cares, right? Nobody cares. It's about what you got to get through it. You got to make it happen mm-hmm. to bring the best package. So for me, you know, I had a lot going on. I was working the midnight shift. So I would was always in court after. And it was, I had to make, I was teaching dance, like all sorts oh, wow. of things. And it, I had to like, I had to find the time, like my time management had to be on point mm-hmm. to be able to give a hundred a hundred percent to, you know, to everything, you know, as best as I could. I don't know that we can give a thousand percent of us to every single thing, but you know what I mean? Just my, my, the balance that was right for me at that time, mm-hmm. it would be successful in all I was doing. So for me, it was, it was different. Uh, I found myself uh, being challenged by things that I never, were never a thing for me. For example, food. Mm-hmm. I never thought of food in any any way food was food right it was never dieted I never anything like that and um getting into the sport and then it's very easy to get hooked on on the the success train right Mm -hmm. and that's where and I learned you know we have to be very awareness is key in in within ourselves what's changing where it's taking us you know where this journey us, where our thoughts are taking us, what are our thoughts? Uh, because even though it's a wonderful sport, it's very easy to go the other direction and it be something that causes more issues than, you know, positive. So I, I found myself getting a little bit obsessed with what I was eating, what I can't eat. And, and it got to the point where, you know, I was like, okay, hold on, girlfriend. Like, what is going on here? This is, this is not you. Mm-hmm. I didn't like I didn't like what I started to see to the point where I'm like, why are you even doing this? You know, Mm -hmm. so I had to check in with myself and, Mm -hmm. and, and be honest with myself and say, wait, 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 you did not start this this way. You were happy about this. You were, this was something that made you excited. Mm -hmm. Um, It didn't take you away from the other things that you loved. Um, 
And so that's when I had to reevaluate and really, I had to do things that were very uncomfortable, but you know what? That was the only way to get out of that Mm -hmm. and come back to a healthy mindset Mm -hmm. and where I could be, I would be able to do this long-term and, and have the initial feelings that I did with it, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. And I think what you're describing is something that we all go through at a certain point, whether it's with competing, right. Or it could be something, another area of life where you start something and it's really good. And then it turns into something that you didn't expect. And so I think what you're mentioning there, that self-awareness really is so key to just kind of always reassess, like don't be afraid to reassess and say, these were my goals, this was my plan, this is what I said I was going to do, but like you mentioned, this is taking me down a path that now is not good for me or now is not healthy for me, whether that is a show, a competition, a relationship, a job. There's so many things that we have really high hopes for that are great for seasons of our lives, And then when that season changes, I do think it's really important to recognize that and and make the changes you need to make. Um, I'm curious, was that when you decided to take some time off from the stage and from competing? No. So that was actually the start of like eight years straight of competing, basically. (sighs) Yes, girl. Wow. Yes. You know, within those eight years, I had a lot of big life changes. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're all human. We have life happen and it's just how we. It, you know, and, and again, there's nothing wrong with taking a break whenever is necessary, as long as you need to keep yourself in a good place mentally. And I, I think that's priority over everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, uh, I, I kept going. I, I got through that, you know, I, I ended up leaving that coach and training myself, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was another ball game. Um, but you know, it took a lot of, again, being honest with myself Mm -hmm. and not worrying about, you know, using the scale as a guide, because I think too many people scale is like this, oh my gosh, like this is, this is, it defines that, you Mm -hmm. know, and you have to separate from that. It is literally a guide because at the end of the day, it means nothing. You could be, I don't know, 10 pounds heavier and look better than you did on the, the last show. So I think that relationship, I, I always say to clients, I'm like, all right, you only weigh yourself when you need to for guidance. Not every day, mm-hmm. not every day. Because that yeah. just, it just gets you in the wrong, I don't like the, the where it takes you mentally, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think anytime you start to do anything in ex- excess, right, that's when you have to really start to look at it. Because I think anything in excess can be a bad thing. And same thing with like food, right? I know with competitors, food is a really big thing where sometimes, you know, they're doing cardio and they're looking at these like foodie pages online. And it's kind of funny, like we've all done it, right? We've all been through that phase. But at a certain point, you got to recognize when it's starting to become obsessive because you're literally just like you're training your biceps, right? And you're doing bicep curls. You're literally (laughs) training your mind to obsess and think about food all the time. And so for people that really struggle with food issues, I always tell them, I'm like, go unfollow all of the foodie accounts and stop. Stop looking up restaurants. Stop making your cheat day list. Like just stop putting your focus on the thing that you're now becoming obsessive about because our focus in life is really everything. You know, where you put your focus is truly what grows in your life. And I think that speaks to why you were able to be such a successful competitor for so long because you really put your focus there. Um, Have you always been a very self-aware person or what are some things in your life that have really helped you to cultivate self-awareness? So no, I mean, I would say overall, no, um, deep down. Yes. I think, Mm -hmm. you know, in childhood, there's a lot of things that because of maybe unconscious people around parents, um, family members, friends, whatever, Mm -hmm. where you grow up, just that, that upbringing, um, of course it has to do with the way that our thought process, the way, what we believe ourselves to be, our confidence, all of those things. Um, and so I think that kind of got covered up. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, no, I, I wasn't, I was not in the best place. I would say for a long period of my, of my life and my, my past, I was in a very dark place. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's something that, you know, the people closest to me know some things about, you know, but it, it took a lot of, For a long time, I was like, why, why am I, why, why do I think like this? Why do I feel like this all the time? Like I have all of these amazing things around me, but Mm -hmm. I know it, Mm -hmm. but my feelings, my emotions, they're not, they're not, um, like aligned with your reality. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And like, that was confusing for me growing up. Um, 
always felt very misunderstood, uh, just a, a lot of things like that. And so it wasn't until, you know, the, the older I got, it just became a thing that was just weighing on me. Like, you got to get this figured out. You got to get this free. You got to let yourself free. Like, that's what, I, that's the message. It was like, you have to free yourself. You have to free yourself. Wow. And what, and I didn't even understand really what that meant at that time, but I knew that that was a very, that was very important for me to dig into and figure out so that I was, I would be able to project the person that I knew that I was, but I wasn't, I was basically projecting opposite of what I was. And, and that's what, that's what we do when we carry a lot of, you know, traumas and like unresolved traumas and, mm -hmm. you know, pain. our bodies are going <laughs> to, <laughs> it's so true. Through, you know, conversations that we have, our perspective, mm -hmm disease like mm -hmm. it's going to come out and so it wasn't I was married before mm -hmm. and it wasn't until my my divorce where I said you know what no no I was like something has to change and um, I am determined I am making this a priority in my life because I don't want to live the rest of my life not feeling like myself I don't want to live the rest of my life feeling trapped mm -hmm. and basically not knowing who I am, you know, it was a weird feeling. It was an interesting feeling, but it was, I didn't like it. And I knew that it be that way. Mm -hmm. So I really, that's when I really, really, really just took personal development and made it a priority in my life. Um, nothing would take me off of it. And um, that was, that was a very, that was life changing for me, for sure. What What are some of the tools that you used to help you along your personal development journey? Like, what are the things that made the most impact for you? Meditation, learning to really quiet my mind, mm -hmm. um, to have really bad anxiety, and I think that anxiety is something that we have all experienced at one point or yeah. or another. And um, really, just trusting myself, my intuition. And, but yeah, I mean, just learning to be present, mm -hmm. all of those things, you know, meditation was what ultimately helped me with that. Mm -hmm. Being okay with just being, being okay with being by myself, mm -hmm. um, really setting very strong boundaries uh, with everybody in my life. And that self-talk telling myself, okay, you were taught that boundaries are selfish. You weren't. You, there was no such thing as boundaries in your growing up that doesn't, it's not selfish. You are taking care of yourself and, you know, and really just words of affirmation and just being there, showing up for myself mm, and wow. what anybody else had to say, pleasing everybody else. Like I was tired of that. I'm like, fuck this. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Me, I, this is my love. Nobody's living this life for me. Mm, wow. And I, I, I saw, I, I was honest and raw with myself about things that I did in my past in relationship with my family, just in general. And that was so like, again, that was, I think one of the most important things for me, just accepting the parts of me that I can from. Oh, and yeah. again, helped with that 100%. Oh man. Yeah. And that's, that's hard. And <laughs> You know, it warms my heart to hear this because what I hear is that you consciously chose to evolve. And I always say evolving is not pretty. It's actually really messy. And there's a lot of things that you're not going to want to face. There's a lot of things that people, you know, probably aren't prepared to face. But if you have the heart for the truth, knowing that the truth is a thing that sets you free in all areas, um, it'll really help you to take a, a, a a look at yourself from a place of non-judgment and a place of love and gratitude of just saying, this is, this is what it is. This is where I've been. This is what I've done, but I know that I want to go somewhere better than I've never, that I've never been at before. So in order to do that, I've got to be honest and take inventory of where I'm at now, where I've been and truly seek to heal from these things. Um, you speak a lot about reparenting and, and conscious reparenting and you do a lot of coaching in that space as well. So I'm curious for someone who's never heard of reparenting, what is that concept? So reparenting is something that I highly suggest every everybody does, you know. So as adults, we have all of these, again, kind of just what I talked about with the way I was feeling. We all have needs. We all have unmet. We all have, we want to be um, understood, seen, heard, comforted, all of these things. Yet 
for some reason, many of us feel empty or like we, we, we find ourselves in a position where we're depending on somebody else to give us those things. Mm -hmm. And he can give us, uh, us those things. Um, reparenting is basically us, you know, choosing to become aware of those things, our unmet needs, our triggers, you know, the things that we want the most and really digging deep to find the root of where the opposite of that for us is coming up at. So for example, um, something's triggering you and you don't understand why, but you find your, say somebody says something you don't like, or I don't know, disagrees with you. And all of a sudden, and again, this is going to take awareness because most people, you're going to go through this process. We all go through it, but it's whether we're aware of it happening or not. A lot of times it's like a half a second thing and you just find yourself fuming but there was so many other things that happened first such as feeling it maybe your tight your chest tightening up or you feel like this lump in your throat your hands are clenching you're getting hot mm -hmm. you know all thing you know you feel like you're attacked but if you were at a in a place where you felt safe within yourself and that you're not feeling attacked you're able to respond to whatever it was in a more calm manner um, and so it's, it's learning, really checking in with ourselves and reprogramming, mm -hmm. you know, the self limiting beliefs that, you know, we accepted a long time ago mm -hmm. um, and just taking care of our inner child because we all have one, that little boy, that little girl that was wounded um, because maybe you didn't feel accepted growing up, or maybe you had an emotionally unavailable mother or father, mm -hmm. um, and all of those things. So basically giving yourself those things and reprogramming the, the um, messages and again, beliefs that were never true, but you accepted. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's so, I think that's such a good explanation of it. And I do feel that it's so important to do that because we all grew up from different backgrounds and experiences and our perspective is really based on, you know, who we were around and how we were raised. And there has to come this point where we start to ask ourselves, why do I believe what I believe? Is it because I really believe that for me? And, or is it because I feel like someone placed that belief on me or because a parent or a teacher told me that this is what I could or couldn't do, you know? So I think it is important to really start to ask those questions. And, you know, that's why I love the personal development world because, you know, we sometimes can get stuck in this unconscious way of, thinking and acting and being to where we create this entire life and then we get to that life and we're like why am I not fulfilled with the life that I just achieved and then you realize maybe I was chasing these things that were never meant for me in the first place and then you have they to were yeah they were told yeah, to you, you and I and I want to mention this you know when it comes to conscious parenting you know it kind of personal development it's all the same you know when it comes you know when you really think about it but just it's not just because you can have a parent who loves you so much where they are entire world and they may not be conscious mm -hmm. so it does because you don't have a conscious parent or you didn't have a conscious parent growing up doesn't mean that they didn't love you mm -hmm. they were doing the best that they could with what yes. they had here's the thing if we're not aware that we have all this stuff going on mm -hmm. how can we change it we mm -hmm. don't think there's any wrong if that's what we know mm -hmm. to be that's what we grew up that's what we grew up seeing that's what we were taught and if we don't have any way to know okay well you know what maybe maybe that isn't right or how do you change right yeah. so I do want to clarify that because I don't you know I don't want parents to like feel bad and yeah. you know it's hard it's mm -hmm. hard being you oh know my gosh. And <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine. My my sister has six. Uh, two of my other sisters have three and two, one on the way. So they have a lot of kids. I just have fur babies. <laughs> but I can only imagine like the responsibility of, of caring for a child. Uh, but I also want to mention kind of in, in relation to that, because I speak a lot about this. And I feel like sometimes in the personal development world or in the therapy world, you know, we as adults, we start going through therapy. And then it's almost like the message that people get sometimes is like, oh, my parents messed me up. And then there's almost this like pointing the finger kind of thing or this like this deep hurt kind of thing in people. It's not that they think that it was necessarily intentional, but I think something that can really help you to, to free you from that hurt and to free you from judging your parents is what you just said that I'd like to echo, which is they were doing the best that they could. And I think that simple perspective of just saying, hey, I need to understand that my parents 
were literally grown up me's like adult me's that were doing the best that they could with what they had. And I think that perspective can really help you to just have no judgment towards them and have some forgiveness in your heart. If there are some things that, you know, need to be forgiven. But, um, I agree. I think it's really important that we work on all of these, you know, ways of growing and thinking and believing and asking ourselves if this is really what's true for us, or if it was just kind of put on us by someone who truly was doing their best. Absolutely. Definitely. And it, you know, it's a different time too. There's so much more there's, it's just the access is a lot bigger. Now we have access to more information. Mm -hmm. And so back then, you know, they didn't have as much, like we have social media, we have, you know, everybody's online now we have Mm -hmm. smartphones. So so much easier to access information if we want it and we want to learn. That's so true. And I also feel like um, talking about mental health and talking about therapy is so much more accepted than a few generations ago. I feel like a few generations ago, they'd be like sneaking off to therapy and not telling anyone. And now it's pretty commonly accepted to talk about it on social media with friends. So, you know, I think that can also help give us some grace and compassion for some of the older generations that maybe didn't even think about doing that for themselves. Definitely. So, okay, I want to, I love that talk, by the way. I think it's so important. Um, But I do want to switch back to some competing questions that I have for you. So you currently are vegan, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so does that, and how long have you been vegan? Does that change the way that you prep? Does it make it harder, easier? Tell me a little bit about that. So it's been almost four years now. Okay. And it's the best decision I've ever made. Really? (laughs) Tell me why. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Um. So, you know, for a long time, I, I'm a huge animal lover, <laughs> like yeah. some people extreme, like, <laughs> but, um, so for a long time when I was competing, I thought I had to eat meat, right? Mm-hmm. I thought to look this way, you have to eat meat, you have to eat all these things and that's it. Mm-hmm. Right. And then it wasn't until I got pregnant that I was just like, mm, yeah, I don't know. Well, actually, first, let me just say this. I am, I'm like this. You want to talk about putting yourself out there yeah. and like your fears and all that. Yeah. I forced myself to watch all of these like factory farm horrific videos. Oh gosh. Girl, I forced myself. I was like, oh, no, like, no, <laughs> you're, cry- I would have been crying the whole time too. Oh my God. It's it disgusting. It, it breaks my heart and like the torture and it's, it's just awful. Right. Yeah. So I forced myself, I watched those videos and it got to the point I was like, all right, I can't, I'm not, I cannot ignore this. I can't mm-hmm. pretend it's not happening mm-hmm. and I don't want part of it. And so again, all these questions were going through my mind, whatever. So d- throughout my pregnancy, I didn't eat a lot of meat. It was, I was kind of like the, you know, I didn't want it either. It just grossed me out. Like the smell of like even chicken. I was like, Ooh, you know, like food adversity. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, no. Yeah. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So then it was, uh, it was, I can't remember. Gosh, I'm terrible with like, but anyways, mm-hmm. when I had to do it, it, I was like, all right, that's it. Cause I'd, I'd be driving down the street and one of these videos would just cross my mind and it would just be like, oh and I, <laughs> that's so sad. I can't, right. I can't. And so I stopped. It was literally from one day to the next. I was like, that's it. Wow. Not doing it. Wow. So yeah. I mean, so the first week I had headaches and I was just my body like detoxing and everything, getting used to it. And then I was fine. I I lost weight. I lost weight because I was learning, you know, it was a learning experience because, because you're vegan, it doesn't mean you're healthy. Right. Like Oreo. Right. Right. So so it was learning how to eat, um, be able to get everything that I needed, my body needed. And so that was, that was fine. That was interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it's, you know, with prep, honestly, this is my, my, my shows this mm-hmm. year. Yeah. After year break. This is the leanest I've ever been. No like, way. Le- wow. I mean, I've seen your glutes and they look insane. Definitely best ever. It's crazy. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah. for a girl, I was a spaghetti noodle growing up. So for yeah. me to like those pictures, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I'm proud of that. Yeah. And it feels good. You know, it feels really good to say that because I, I love my stage pictures and that's such a good feeling. I've never said that. (laughs) Yes, girl. I feel you on that so much. I've done so many shows now and yeah, I, I still, to this day, I feel like I could, yeah, 
I don't have those stage photos that I'm like, I love every one of those. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally so that's but a good feeling. Yeah. I think so. These are the the positives, right? Mm-hmm. That I see from just transitioning to vegan. Um, number one, the most important for me is just I feel I feel like, and immediately when I did it, I felt like this huge weight lifted off my shoulders because it was something that was very important for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also I didn't realize I had a lot of things going on. Like I didn't realize I felt bloated, all of the stuff that was just normal for me. Mm. It went away. I'm like, Oh, when it went away, I'm like, Oh, I was struggling with that. And I had no idea. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. And like, I felt, I just felt lighter overall. My energy is crazy. Like I, I would wake up and I feel groggy a lot and I don't, I wake up, I'm full of energy. Um, you know, it's just that. And then the, just, you know, being lean and just, just feeling good overall. Mm-hmm. Those, those are the main, main difference. Yeah. And so what's like a favorite prep meal that you have? Like, do you have like a go-to prep meal that you eat? And if so, what it is? Or was it, what is this? What is it? <laughs> so I'm probably, I'm probably really weird when it comes to this because everybody has like their favorite like prep stuff. But I'm so, when it comes to prep, mm-hmm. I don't, I feel like I just shut off this part of my brain where I'm like, you just got to eat this food as fuel. Literally. So I don't care if I enjoy it. I mean, of course I do enjoy like I'll forever enjoy, like, I know it sounds, like, lame, but, like, my oatmeal and protein powder. It's not and, lame like, at butter. all. That's not lame <laughs> at all. It's the best part of the day. <laughs> I was eating through this prep. It was uh, tempeh, tofu. Those are my those were my main uh, protein sources. Mm-hmm. Um, just honestly, like, at that point, like, give me something sweet, like, sweet potato. Like, right. that's why I say it's, like, oh. <laughs> No, I, you know, I don't, I don't mind it. I like it. Yeah. I, I, I feel the same way though. It's like, once you go into prep, it's like, you kind of just flip that switch and you're in the mode of just fueling yourself. So your training sessions can go well, your cardio can go well, and you can get that progress picture update that you're looking forward to. Uh, so, okay. (laughs) The stage has changed a lot and bikini as a division has changed a lot over the last couple of years. And since you've been on stage, how were you able to kind of look at the current, um, you know, spectrum of what's going on and make changes to your physique, maybe your posing? I, in, your posing has changed a lot from day one to the last posing presence that I saw on stage, which is just absolutely beautiful. So how were you able to kind of look at what's going on and make those changes for yourself? So it's interesting. When I first decided I wanted to come back, mm-hmm. I looked at the poses and I'm like I don't know that I can nail that front pose like I didn't body you know because we pose depending on our physiques we want to represent the best of you know the best physique possible you know so I was like I I was trying the front pose and I'm like "Mm, this doesn't look good I Mm -hmm. I don't know right Mm -hmm. so it took a lot of practice um now physique wise and I Mm -hmm. thought about this also because I, it has changed a lot. And my body, the bodies back then when I competed was, it was very different. The girls are leaner. They're, you know, more muscular. Mm -hmm. I love the look. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think what helped me the most is the fact that I, because I wasn't planning on competing, that came up in December. So before December, 2021, I was training for a completely different sport, tactical sports, and which, you know, includes, I, I started doing CrossFit, which, you know, is a big no-no for bikini. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but, you know, like tactical games and all that stuff. That is all about how strong you are and yeah. your performance. And so I did. I started doing CrossFit. I absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. I was getting stronger. And I loved that because when I was training for bikini, it wasn't necessarily about how strong you were or how mm-hmm. much you can lift. More so about, okay, I need to shape my body this way. Right. You need to train figure it out to mm-hmm. what's going to make this physique possible for me I had a, I had to hold back a lot when it came to training and that was one of the things that stopped making it a little bit fun for me and boring when it mm-hmm. came to training genetically my legs want to be big they mm-hmm. want to be more, and that was not the look mm-hmm. back then. so I had to stop training legs because even if I did legs one day it was like they would just blow up for a while mm-hmm. it was just 
I realized I tried everything. I literally tried everything and I, I learned my body. I'm like, yeah, you just can't. You're going to, I'm still hitting them by doing all these other exercises, but there were many exercises I was, I couldn't do. I had to avoid. Mm -hmm. So with CrossFit, I'm deadlifting. I'm doing all of these exercises. And I'm like, yes, this is amazing. Yeah. I love it. And, and of course it helps put on muscle. You can't control where it's going, but again, different than bikini, but that helped, I think a lot with being able to put on the muscle that was needed for the current, you know, bikini standards. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then posing, I really worked on that and I'm still tweaking it. Um, I still feel, I grew up dancing. So for me, when we go, when we go on stage, that's like an opportunity for me to just like express myself mm -hmm. and just, I love it so much. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. So speaking it, you know, I plan on competing in a couple months. And so I want to improve. I definitely want to improve, but I am very happy with what I was able to accomplish in that short period of time for sure. Were you nervous getting back on the stage for the first time in years? You know what? I was more excited than anything. Mm -hmm. It was just pure excitement, mm -hmm. um, which I love because for me, it was the mindset was different. I've always mm -hmm. had that mindset of like, you know, train your ass off, mm -hmm. do everything you can, right? Um, in a healthy way, train your butt off, mm -hmm. but that's from the outcome because we are not in control of what happens. That's so true. You know, mm -hmm. what the judges, you know, decide can't take it personal. It's hard. It's hard. It's one of those things that I think experience and just, you know, help you with. But, but yeah, so I, I just, I really just, allowed myself to just go with that and just I that's what I felt it was just a lot a lot of excitement yeah and I know there was so much hype around you coming back because you know <laughs> once everyone realized that you're coming back on the stage I uh, it was just like so much hype and so much support do you feel like you were you felt that support on stage and through social media and what was that like getting all of the fans back involved with you being on stage yeah I definitely I got chills when you said that because it's been like I am just, I am so grateful for all the amazing people that I have around me, mm -hmm. you know, um, just everybody who supports me, who's been following for such a long time and has seen just my journey through life. Mm -hmm. And I did, I, I definitely felt that support and I am, I'm just, I, I'm full of gratitude. I love everybody for it. Um, I appreciate just the beautiful messages and just mm -hmm. encouraging and, you know, of course the 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 messages you get about how oh my gosh you inspired me after a baby or you know I was done and all of those are always so good to read yeah that's awesome well thank you for just leading by example by everything that you share and everything that you put out you know we kind of talked a little bit before the show but I really heavily align with a lot of your messaging that you put out you're very you know pro America and pro freedom and you know pro a lot of the same things I love the fact that you've done the tactical games I think that's so incredible um, is that something that you're still currently competing in or is that taking a backseat to the bikini shows right now so I definitely uh, I'm planning on doing uh, the one at Brownells in um, Iowa in October. Oh, so wow. it's going to be a little crazy because I actually, I'll be competing the week before. And of course, if I had it my way, I would not want to be competition lean to do mm -hmm. a tactic like that just because it is hard. It's it's hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but the, way, the way my schedule is and with prep and everything mm -hmm. um, and traveling a lot, that's, that's and I got to support my Brownells family. I love them. So um, that's gonna that's what seems to be the best one for me. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna Go do it. it. So yeah, that's ex <laughs> that's exciting. And and I think it's really cool to show a very successful competitor like yourself that actually has different aspects to them and different passions and how you can be successful in both. I think that's really incredible and inspiring because sometimes we put ourselves in a box or we go into one industry or one passion and we think that that's the one thing when in reality you actually can be made up of a bunch of different things and I think people should go out there and try new things. Were you, were you nervous to do your first tactical game? Oh my gosh. Yes, I did. So I did a skirmish. When was it? It was December last year. Okay. And I had been training like, cause it's, so you go in and you know, it's a lot of like CrossFit slash strongman, uh, fitness, mm -hmm. um, 
also have rifle and pistol and you need to be accurate, you yeah. know, under stress. Yeah. A lot of, it's very, so it's very physical, very mental. So I love it because it requires you to be good at a lot of different things mm-hmm. and you under pressure mm-hmm. and I love challenges. So I'm like, yep, this sounds like it's right up my alley. Yeah. So I was nervous. I was nervous. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, but it was so much fun, like doing it. And it, mm-hmm. and I know it, it can look intimidating mm-hmm. um, for, for many people and maybe a lot of women, but honestly that like the whole just environment, it's not like that. It's everybody's so willing to help mm-hmm. and you know, we want to see each other succeed. Mm-hmm. So it's been pretty awesome. I wish I could have done a bunch, many others, but again, just the time. So I may throw myself in another skirmish this summer and then definitely do the tactical games, um, which is the two day event in, uh, in October for sure. Oh. But the balance with the bikini training and this, because it is different. Yeah. That's it's, a lot. It's knowing when to stop, you know, like close mm-hmm. to a show, CrossFit, mm-hmm. um, certain reasons, but, but it's, it's just, it's a weird, you got to learn how to make it work, you know? Yeah. For sure. Let's let's talk a little bit about um, women and being skilled in firearms and training and self-awareness and just uh, being, you know, mindful and protective of yourself. Right. Because I feel like as a woman who is a law enforcement officer and you also have all of this training, you have a lot of experience with that. But I think sometimes women can be really apprehensive or maybe just scared or fearful of you know, equipping themselves in this way. So especially as a previous officer, what is your, I guess, outlook on, you know, women and, the, you know, being responsible for their own personal safety? Do you have any stories or examples or just like a heart towards that? And if so, can you kind of just speak on that? Yes, definitely. So one thing I'm going to say is that you're not always going to have somebody protect you. You have to learn to protect yourself. You have to feel empowered on your own mm-hmm. because, you know, we, when God forbid somebody attacks us or comes at us, or there's so many different things that happen all of the time. And we don't hear about, it doesn't mean that because we're not hearing about these crimes or these, these horrible things happening to people that it doesn't exist, Mm -hmm. you know? And I know that firsthand because I was a cop and I know we don't, it's not on the news. It's not out there. It's not on social media all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had personal experiences where you know, I've been approached by people, mm-hmm. weird people, you know, he, six plus, I'm five two. So for me, like, I men are stronger than us. They're, that's what it is, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's going to be times where, like, we can't, I can't fight a six four man, mm-hmm. 300. There's no way, girl, I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. I will try. To, <laughs> but the odds <laughs> of me, like, yeah. knocking them out. Totally. But, I mean, so we need to be in a place where we still feel like we can do something to protect ourselves. We have that right. Mm-hmm. We live in a country that right. Take advantage of that right. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm very grateful for that. I had a horrible experience. Um, it was last year. Mm-hmm. I was uh, at the dentist with my son. He was three at that time. And I always carry. I carry it. It, you know, does carrying guarantee you're going to not have something terrible happen? No. But you know what? If something shitty happens, mm-hmm. you are prepared. You at least have something that can help. And mm-hmm. so for me, that's, I definitely take advantage of that. And we were at a doctor's office at the dentist mm-hmm. and it was, it was actually, I never went back, <laughs> but it, it was like in, in a neighborhood almost. I don't know. Okay. And it's a very, it had like this wraparound porch and it was around, um, uh, actually, no, what am I talking about? It was over a year ago because it was like around the whole cove when, oh, you know, right. everybody was anything like that. So they wanted us to wait outside. So we went outside and there were a few people out there, but not many. Mm-hmm. Brett saw these turtles in the, in the pond and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, go see them. So we went to go see them. Now, when we came out, when we were going, heading back there, so let me see if I can kind of explain this. So we were walking, there was a street that's in front of the dentist office and there was a car that was heading 
So we were, let me see how I'm going to do this. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Give us a little visual. <laughs> I'll do this. So the car was heading this, let's just say northbound, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Walking southbound. Okay. All of a sudden, there's nobody else out there. It's just me and Brent. And all of a sudden in the car, I see him and he looks at me and he goes Voo, right in front of us. So he goes into oncoming traffic. There was no cars coming. Parks right in front of us so immediately i'm on like high alert i'm like what the hell is Mm -hmm. this guy doing and so i'm watching him he did literally that we were the only people there he came he stops and he's like this he's like we're just staring at each other i have brenton by the hand now i typically carry on me Mm -hmm. that i was carrying in my purse not my favorite way to carry Mm -hmm. but i that way that day and I was really pissed at myself for that because that situation. So he's literally about to get out of the car. Now he's just, we're just staring at each other. And I know this guy is up to no good. Like mm-hmm. intuitively mm-hmm. he wanted, he wanted wow. my child. Like I can't describe. Oh, I have chills. And just like, it was, and it happened so fast. Mm-hmm. And he there. And all I could think of, okay, I'm just running through my head as he's literally coming here is I'm running through the scenario already. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, you're going to grab your gun. You're going to do this. You're going to. But because my gun was in my purse, it wasn't the be- it was a lot easier if I could just draw from, right. you know, waistband or mm-hmm. but I wasn't, you know, and I do train for it. But again, it was one of those things mm-hmm. that the typical purse I use. And this is why it's so important for us, even myself, who I have training in this. We have to be prepared for anything. Mm-hmm. And so I, I knew what I was going to do immediately. Like I, you know, and I grabbed Breton and it was like God seriously that just like came down because as soon as I turned to grab to take my my gun out and literally I was that this man was like this on the door coming out oh my gosh and right by one hand I'm like do I carry him do I hold him do I whatever so as soon as I went to turn um the there was a the what is it called the dentist assistant Mm -hmm. and she came out and literally by the time I went like this, the guy was gone. He was gone. Nowhere wow. to be. So it would have ended really bad. Wow. I'll tell you what. I was not letting him. No, absolutely not. Near my. We know that. <laughs> Tactical games I- champ. Like we know that. <laughs> One of those things. And I didn't even process that. Mm. And I've seen a whole stuff, you know, things that many people will never see. And I'm glad that they'll never see him because. Mm. Oh, but, um. It was, I, I had to go through the dentist appointment. Brian was not having it, but I had to hold everything in. And it wasn't, I got home it wasn't until I got home. Brian was inside and I just cried. Yeah. I remember I just, I held it all in because you, you can't, you got to like focus. Mm-hmm. And I just let it all out because I was like, I know, you know, when you just yeah. know, yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, no, that I wasn't going to allow it to happen, but it was a crappy situation. And me thinking about that and not having a firearm on me, I would have felt like I again I will use whatever as a weapon, mm-hmm. my hands, whatever. But you know what? Having that did help me feel mm-hmm. like I could at least protect my child and myself more. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, wow. Thank and thank you for sharing that story. I know that's hard probably to think about and revisit. And I can't even imagine how scary that must have been afterwards. Um, but you know, I've definitely experienced things before too, where, you know, I, I was in California actually, and I was leaving the gym and it was near Compton actually, because I was staying there for a job that I was working and the gym happened to be there. So I was like, okay, I'll just go at like, you know, 5am and I'll leave by 6.30am and I can get in and out. And so I do, and there's no one there, no one at the gym. And I walk out, I get to my car and then I look, and then I just like look up and all of a sudden out of nowhere, there's no one awake. There's no one around. There's this guy who's very clearly a part of the gang and barely wearing clothes, like his pants all the way down. And he looks at me and beelines it for my car. And I had just gotten in my car and I'm in a really crappy rental car. I have no weapon with me. I literally have nothing. And normally I would carry something, but in California, it's a little different. And I had already moved back to Texas. So I had nothing with me. He beelined it for my car. And in a split second, I had to decide what to do. And I just decided that I was going to hit him with my car. So I slammed on the gas because there, there was nowhere I could go, you know. And um, he, I, he moved out of the way at the last second and I hit his hand. 
and I kept going, but I would, man, my heart was racing. It is. And I, I love that you mentioned that, you know, too, is like you had to figure out in half a second, like a split second. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's trained because you know what, when it comes down to it, unless you've practiced or you've gone through it, you don't know how you're going to react. So true. And it's like, freeze, can't freeze. No, you cannot freeze. no, absolutely. But it's something that if you feel prepared and you feel confident, I want women to feel confident. Yes. I want women empowered and that mm-hmm. they know that they have a chance, mm-hmm. you know, if you freeze, then I mean, the odds are not in your favor. So yeah, very important for women to practice different scenarios and there are so many places that offer this where mm-hmm. you get to work with sims or pretend like there are different um trainers who come to your house and help you like what if there's a home invasion do you have a plan if god forbid somebody breaks into your house while you're at home mm-hmm. where is where is do you have code words do you have where are you all going to meet if something happens like these are all things that you know I think are very important to talk about. I think so too. You know, I think sometimes though, for people who are not in this at all, and they almost kind of want to ignore the reality that bad things do happen and evil people do exist. I think sometimes they view this kind of conversation or this kind of uh, way of living as a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a paranoid type of living, (laughs) but it's actually the exact opposite. Like it's zero anxiety. It's zero paranoia. It's actually full, like you said, confidence, empowerment, and belief in yourself that you've got this, you know, and I really do also believe it's just important to put yourself in those types of training scenarios. I saw recently that you actually just did the red letter project, right? With so, um, Maddie was there. I uh-huh. was at Sawmill. We did a day survival course uh-huh. out at Sawmill with Matt, and Maddie oh, was there also. Gotcha. So, um, it was pretty cool. It was awesome. You know, I learned a lot of things that were very cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned how to how to build a tripod and boil water in a in a plastic water bottle and wow. you know a plastic <laughs> I don't I know how to dance. do that stuff <laughs> so okay you're definitely on my end of the world team for sure <laughs> like which poisonous which mushroom like it was cool it was mm-hmm. so cool it, man, I left there feeling so inspired and empowered and just confident about like all right if I ever get lost in the woods <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent. You know what though? I think it's so important to just kind of always continue to build those survival skills because, you know, you never know where things are going to go and I would just rather be prepared than not. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, you know, to hit back on, you know, to touch on what you said about people thinking we're just paranoid. Mm-hmm. No, literally I'm so at peace. Yes. It's about been there. Like I've mm-hmm. been on both sides you know, civilian and then also law enforcement where I have seen what happens every single day. Mm-hmm. The amount of Asians, people would be like, you're lying. It happens all the time. Wow. You know, it's just being prepared because the last thing you want mm-hmm. is to be in that position and not know what to do. It is the worst feeling. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, and I I think, you know, it really is up to us to take responsibility over our own protection. And, you know, I think it's important just to make sure that you never put yourself in a situation where you feel helpless. Like, I never want to feel helpless. Last little story on this topic, but I recently took a solo vacation, and I went to the U.S. Virgin Islands. By the way, best decision ever. That was the best trip I've ever had in my life. I fully recommend everybody do a whole week of self-love on an island. <laughs> and, you know, it was great. But I got there and I did not really, I didn't really realize what um, it would look like surrounding the resort that I was at. Um, and it was pretty unsafe for a female traveling alone, to be honest. It just was. So I got really creative because I had nothing with me. And normally I will travel with like at least a switchblade or something because I can usually sneak that in <laughs> one of the bags. But I didn't this time because it's my favorite and I didn't want to get caught with it. So I get there and I find an office max. There's nothing on this island, but I find an office max. So I go in there and I'm like, hey, I am looking for... <clears throat> some fishing supplies. Do you happen to have a pocket knife or maybe like some scissors or, you know, and so he brings me to the section. He goes, we have a box cutter. And I was like, that'll do. So I bought a box cutter 
and I had it with me. I always had it in my purse. And there was actually one night where, you know, we spoke a little bit about following your intuition, but there was one night on the solo trip where the night before I went out and I went to these specific places and it was a great time, just a wonderful time. So then, you know, a few nights later, the next night I went out and we happened to go by that spot again. And so I go by that spot and it's like there was something in the air. You know, one guy comes up to me and like, you know, it wasn't a pleasant interaction and I asked him to go away, you know, and then it's like something like that happened again pretty quickly after that. And I was looking around it, just the vibe was completely off. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to wait for something to happen. I'm going to get out of here. So I got out of there. I got in my Uber or they have no Uber. It's a taxi. Um, And the taxi ride was probably one of the most uncomfortable taxi rides that I've ever had. Um, And the guy was incredibly inappropriate, started talking about really just inappropriate things. I was so uncomfortable. And I immediately just got that out of my purse and I had it just open sitting right there, you know, and I was fully prepared and ready. But my heart sank because when I was leaving to go out that night, I didn't have that with me. And at the last minute, I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to go grab it. Just make sure that I have it with me. And my heart kind of dropped thinking about not having it in that situation because that situation could have gone pretty badly, you know. So I just I just want to mention that because I think it's important to share stories of real things that have happened so people can realize, you know, that it's just so much better to be prepared and to never make yourself an easy target. Like a crazy woman with a box cutter is not an easy target. <laughs> exactly. 100% agreed. Yeah. So get creative <laughs> if you have to, ladies. <laughs> um, okay. So we're kind of getting towards the end of the show here. Um, as a consciousness coach, uh, can you tell me a little bit about the work that you do with your clients, why you like working with your clients, and if you have any programs or anything that might be interesting for people that are on this personal development journey, feel free to talk about those and share those as well. Yes. So I, one of the biggest reasons, biggest reasons I love, you know, coaching when it comes to personal development and just conscious parenting mm-hmm. is because of what it did for me. I feel like it saved my life. Wow. You know, I know it's one of those things where we have, there's so many people that, you know, how they say where you could be 25, but dead, yes. you know, mm-hmm. it's like that. It's like, you're living, but you're not. Mm-hmm. And I to be able to help them dig deep, not be afraid to really just be fearless in learning are and digging deep and getting to the root of all of these things that are not allowing them from being who they are and just being free, you know, because a whole different, different life. It's a completely different life. It's a beautiful life. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my passion. Um, a lot of what I do with them and I, and I, and I work with people who are ready and want to and willing to go there mm-hmm. because you know that's the only way that I would be able to be Help helpful them. to it. totally because yeah because if you if you have the walls up mm-hmm. to a point where you won't let anything or anyone in I you're not there yet and yeah. that's okay We're all on different paths different journeys timelines that's okay but that's not a client that I can work with mm-hmm. uh, so really for me it's about helping them you know create that awareness just make it even bigger awareness for themselves Mm -hmm. and able to be conscious during the day of little things that you know the patterns that they find themselves you know um and working on you know kind of chopping them and slowly taking the layers off and ultimately healing what needs to be healed because I can't heal anything for, for anyone, you know, I will help you see it. I will help you make sense of it, Mm -hmm. but ultimately it's each person, it's each individual. It's up to them to really, I I don't know your life. You can tell me, but I didn't live it, you know? Mm -hmm. So every person has the power to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. I just help them get there and to be able to see what they need to see Mm -hmm. and give them tools to work on that and do the work that that needs to be done to be able to get to the result that they want. 
I'm so thankful for people like you and people that are so passionate about helping people heal in their lives because I really do believe that we have to have more healing in this world, in this country, just as a whole. You know, when I look around and I see a lot of the issues that are happening or the division or the hatred towards each other, I really just see humans that need a lot of healing, man. (laughs) Oh, 100%. You know, they say, oh, you can't change the world. The way we change the world is by changing ourselves, working on ourselves individually as individuals, being raw, taking accountability and responsibility for our own stuff. Mm -hmm. To point the finger. It's so easy. And you mentioned that, you know, it's so easy. Oh, it's because that just makes you stay there. It's an excuse to not change. It's an excuse to avoid the things that hurt you. Mm -hmm. But it's not a, it's not a pretty journey. But if there's one thing I can say about it, it is the most rewarding thing we can do and the most loving thing we can do for ourselves. Oh, that's beautiful. That fills my heart. I, I cannot agree with that anymore. It really is just such a beautiful journey that's so much more rewarding than staying where you're at because you really got to ask yourself. You're like, OK, I know I'm unhappy with where I'm at, but I'm scared of this growth. I'm scared of facing this thing. And you're going to have to get to a point where the pain of where you're at is more than the uncomfortable feeling of facing some of your fears and actually going for the growth, you know, but no matter how dark it seems, you can get through it as long as you just put one foot in front of the other and maybe grab one friend, right? We're not meant to go through life alone, whether it's a friend or it's a therapist or a family member, just one person that you can kind of rely on as you work through these things will really help carry you through because, you know, we all need somebody. Oh, yeah. And one thing I want to say is sometimes it feels safer. You know, our ego wants to tell us it's safe. That's the job of our ego Mm -hmm. is to keep it safe. Mm -hmm. So choose your consequence because everything you do has a consequence. Staying where you're at has a consequence. Mm -hmm. You know, so whether you decide to do something scary Mm -hmm. and face your fears and just go for it, that has consequences but also staying where you're at does too. You're not avoiding consequences, you know? So I think that is something that can help some people just put things into perspective. And it's like, well, I'm not, a, I'm really not avoiding anything other than just staying here and feeling the way I am. But hey, maybe the grass is greener on the other side. I don't know. I don't know. Go find out. Find yeah, out. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> I think that's what's so beautiful about this journey of life, right? Is that life is just meant to be experienced. You don't have to have such a, I feel like people want this certainty so much that they have to know that they're going to be successful in the business before they do it. They have to know that they're going to win the show before they do it. You know, they have to really feel that. And it's like, no, like you're actually allowed to go out there and fail. You're allowed to go out there and suck. You're allowed to go out there and say, this isn't for me, (laughs) but you have to go out there and try it or you're never going to know. You're going to be sitting on the sidelines wondering and questioning and I think sometimes people, they they seek clarity, right? And they, they want that so badly, yet they're just sitting at home thinking about what to do and making lists. And it's like, that's not the way to clarity. Like, yes, that could be a step and that could be helpful. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to just jump at a certain point. So stop waiting around. Stop thinking about it. Stop overthinking. Stop just venting to everyone else around you and step forward and do it. 100%. <laughs> I agree with that. India, yeah, it's been amazing having you on here. You, I feel like you're just such a wellspring of knowledge and in experience in so many areas of life. And I feel like we could probably just take one topic and talk about each of those for an hour. But I appreciate you kind of hitting on everything today. Um, I really appreciated that. Is, you know, before we end the show, what's next for you or what are your goals, you know, moving forward through the end of the year? So thank you so much mm-hmm. for everything. You're amazing and a beautiful person. And Thank I love you. what you do for everybody, especially with this podcast, because we need it. We need that, you know, this message out there of personal development. Um, so for me, for the rest of the year, so I have a few shows coming up. Mm-hmm. I do doing a tactical games. Um, I'm also working on training programs, um, you know, for physical, like whoever wants to get in shape, different programs. I'm not going to say exactly which ones yet, but, okay. um, but I'm going to be adding group coaching to that. Oh, cool. So you're going to have a, whether it's an eight week, 12 week program where you get in shape or transform your body, but we're also going to meet once a week and it's as a group and we're going to talk about the obstacles and, you know, 
tire and everything because ultimately my goal I, I want to see everybody succeed mm -hmm. and I know that some a lot of people in the fitness journey they feel like they're doing it alone especially mm -hmm. beginners and so I want to be able to help them kind of get their mind in the right place so that they're able to learn where it needs to be so that they can continue on they don't need they can do this on their own when you know they're finished with the program mm -hmm. and succeed so mm -hmm. um working on an nft project oh fun yeah, I'm so excited. And then um, launching a couple of other things. I just launched a, a pre-workout, oh, cool. which I'm really excited about. It's called Shuriken Powder, and it's on uh, bpisports.com. So, yeah, I, I'm really excited. I have a few exciting things coming up for the, <laughs> the rest of the year. That's amazing. You have so many different things going on. I'm, I'm sure that helps to keep you very busy in addition to being a wife and a mom and just everything that you have on your plate. Um, but you're definitely one of those women that I feel like you're just kind of a boss in all areas of life and it really shows. So thank you again for just being on today's show. Thank you for the way that you lead and just know that all of us here at the Evolve with Emily show, we're rooting you on, we're supporting you and we can't wait to see how you do at your next show. Oh, thank you so much, Emily, for having me. It was truly so much fun to be on your show and chat with you. So thank you. Of course. All right, guys, you know the drill. If you enjoyed today's show, please do us a favor and share it on your Instagram stories or text it to a friend. You can find all of India's links, websites, social media down below. Make sure to, to support her, her codes as well. So check those out down below. And without further ado, we'll see you guys in the next episode.